When you're in a build fight, you might fumble difficult building and edit techniques and then give up on them. Don't do that. The best players wouldn't be where they are if they gave up so easily. Two pro players, Kenneth and Symphony, are the prime examples of practice makes perfect. They both build at superhuman speeds and it's all because they don't fear failure. In this video, I'm going to dissect their movements and plays so you can learn them at your own pace. Hey, let's watch the masters at work. Kenneth is a frame perfect, lightning fast builder, but his building isn't the most impressive part of this clip. We're going to focus on his positioning and game sense. Let's dissect Kenneth's masterful play. For starters, Kenneth's partner is dead. He lands a few shots on a player and is being pushed. He jumps to get an angle for a chip shot and builds floors right after. This is a standard play for high level players that you need to be using as well. You can deal damage and maintain high ground at the same time. You can also edit the floor like Kenneth does here to finish your kill. He pushes to high ground in time to hear enemy number two fly in. Then he quickly stacks floors and ramps to maintain high ground and then his opponent retreats shortly after. Now Kenneth begins his hunt. He shoots, builds, then edits, cornering his opponent into a box and begins pickaxing. He's constantly moving and has his eyes glued on his opponent's hands. If you see the pen and paper waving around, your opponent is editing and trying to get a cheeky headshot on you. Be careful of this at all times. Once Kenneth gets the wall replaced, he edits and positions around the corner to peek. He misses his shot, but he still goes all in. After missing a few shots, Kenneth pulls out his shotgun and lands a clean headshot, finishing the job. I want to go back to the wall replace play because many players struggle with this. Kenneth does three things to ensure his success, which you can learn from. First, he makes himself a difficult target by moving around. You never know when the all-in is going to happen. Next, he pays attention to what his opponent is doing. If you see them moving their arms in an edit configuration, get ready to fight. It's a perfect time to engage. Lastly, once you get the wall replaced, play around corners and peek to your advantage, like Kenneth does right here. Keep these three things in mind the next time you're breaking into a box. All right, let's go back to the clip. Kenneth isn't finished yet. Right as he kills player number two, a plane flies overhead and a pair of players parachute in. This is a death sentence for most players, but not Kenneth. Usually a player's intuition here is to build. Although you want to get high ground in most situations, when you're being ambushed by a team, you'll really want to get damage on them before they engage. Here, Kenneth knows this and decides to take a shot. By landing a shot, it forced the enemy to back up, giving Kenneth the room he needed to build. Whenever you're about to be ambushed, try to get a couple shots off before the enemy gets into range. This is because they are running and won't be shooting at you, while you'll be able to get pre-aimed shots. It'll also give you time to build and an HP advantage. He doesn't stay on high ground for long. He drops down, takes a few shots, and realizes that he's not going to win the fight, so he builds back up to high ground. In this meta, high ground isn't as valuable as it was previously, but in this case, it's always important to recognize when you'll need it and when you won't. Here, Kenneth knew that he was at a disadvantage and his only recourse is to build up. Kenneth also lucked out with more players joining the fight. Whenever you're at a disadvantage, getting third party isn't a bad thing. Kenneth is able to sit on high ground, heal up, and evaluate the situation. He's back in control. Once he hears players fight and sees a kill on the feed, he makes a play. He finds an enemy turtling in a box and breaks through for a quick kill. He gets another big shot with the window edit, but he gets hit in the back. He has one shot to keep himself alive and he made it count. Another third party has arrived and Kenneth is bailed out again. He's given time to heal and drinks minis, and he's back in the game. There are three takeaways from this clip. First, play intelligently against turtling opponents. They're going to try to trick you, so make sure to keep the pressure on. Second, fight back against enemies that are pushing against you aggressively. You can't always count on buildings to protect yourself. Lastly, it's perfectly fine to disengage fights, especially when you're now being third party. You can always re-engage when the time is right and now you're the third party. This next clip is simply insane. Kenneth performs a series of builds and edits that don't seem humanly possible. His opponent is no write-off either. To cap it off, Kenneth finishes the game with a play that you have never seen before. Let's get into it. Kenneth grapples to high ground and begins a build fight. 
He 90s and goes for the all-in instead of going for high ground. He misses and tries to bait his opponent into his ramp by flipping it and then placing traps. This would have been the play of the month, but he falls short. His punishment is low ground, but he makes up for it with a smart play. He doesn't instantly try to retake high ground. Retakes are very risky when your opponent can track and knock you down. Instead, he waits and he finds an unseen angle and runs out looking to retake high ground. Watch this retake at full speed. Pretty overwhelming, right? Let's slow it down. Kenneth builds a basic ramp tunnel and wedges a cone in between. He edits a window to run through and protect his back. He builds walls all around him and he resets the cone. Then he edits it into a ramp. This is a next level 180 turn. He doesn't stop here. He builds a cone and a floor in front to protect himself. Most players would have to pause and edit windows in both the floor and the cone. Kenneth doesn't. He runs full speed and he edits both builds to run through. As he passes under the ramps, he cones his opponents, but unfortunately falls down. This time, Kenneth isn't going to wait for a retake. He's going in right away. He finds one of his old cones and he starts a ramp tunnel with it. He shows us another advanced 180 turn right here. He flips his ramp 180 degrees and is back on track. You can't perform this edit with two ramps. You can only do this if your ramp is connected to a cone. It's just how the game works. The last step is to jump and face through the bottom of the ramp. We'll show it to you again in slow motion so you can start practicing. Kenneth is on level ground with his opponent and going back and forth for high ground with 90s. He finally catches his opponent after a long chase and goes for a trap finish. Both players place traps on opposite walls and neither player took a single point of damage. Kenneth is again on the chase. He almost started an all-in fight here, but scuffs a bill and Harry Potters himself. This doesn't stop Kenneth. He keeps pushing with cones, traps, and edits. He's trying very hard to end this fight. He edits his cone into a ramp and goes all in. He charges through his opponent's build and finally wins high ground. He edits straight down, lands a huge shot. It's almost over. Wait, he accidentally grappled himself off the edge. What a tragic ending. But why is he still so calm? Right before he falls, he catches himself with a grappler at the perfect moment. This play was filthy. You can already guess what he does next. He breaks his opponent down and that's a wrap. We just witnessed some next level building. A few of these techniques will become meta sometime next season, so it's a good thing that you learned them now. Go back and watch all of his retakes. They seem incredibly difficult, but with some practice, you can do it too. We know what Kenneth brings to the table, crazy mechanics and top-notch game sense. Let's see if Symphony, the player crowned as the fastest editor, can match him. He's quick on his feet and always calm. That's the reason why he's able to edit so decisively. He makes all the right moves, he chooses the best spots, and he anticipates his enemy's movements. Let's watch him dismantle three players with aggressive edits. Glue your eyes to the screen, or else you'll miss it. Symphony executes a clean, high ground push with multiple edits in a few seconds. He's building ramps, placing cones on top, and editing them away over and over. This technique allows you to push high ground at full speed while protecting yourself. This is a super advanced technique that high level players use all the time. Symphony doesn't stay on high ground for long. He chases his opponent and spots him under a ramp. He's tracking him like a hawk. He then spots a retake, denies it with the floor, edits a window and gets a chip shot in, and then starts dishing out the pain with flick after flick, building after each one. I know that's a lot to ask from you guys, but start practicing like this today. You won't get it at first, but this is what you need to strive for. Symphony's finishing move is a double down edit to claim kill number one. However, he doesn't have time to celebrate. Another player is right above him looking to clean him up. Symphony covers up with a roof and a cone, drops down, and he creates another one by one. He finds a pump and a deep breath. One player is pickaxing his wall and another player is throwing dynamite. Check out Symphony's insane 360 degree turn in response. He covers all angles, he's playing perfect defense, and in Fortnite, the best players turn defense into offense. He edits a corner, and he lands a big shot instead of hiding. This edit seems basic, but it's actually very advanced. Since it takes two pickaxe swings to destroy a wall, you have time to edit your wall just as the second swing is on its way. 
This is sure to surprise your opponent and give you a clean shot. Immediately after editing, you'll have a second to shoot them without any counterplay since they'll be stuck in their swing animation. Even though Symphony loses control of the wall, he created enough space to make a play for high ground. He edits a corner and he jumps out. I want to emphasize his jump because he was able to make a 180 degree turn with a single floor. Be efficient with your movements. Symphony earns an uncontested high ground and keeps himself two to three tiles above every player at all times. He's also pelting players with big shots any chance he gets. Once he weakens everyone, he makes his way down to claim the kills. The first player he tracks is very weak and gives away her position by building. Symphony goes down, breaks and replaces the wall, then edits a corner. He denies this player the peaking angle and finishes the kill with a nice flick. The last player grapples in immediately after. Symphony quickly builds a special ramp tunnel for high ground. He places a cone on the ramp above him and wedges another between his last ramp. These cones act as a layer of protection and denies enemies from counterbuilding. Symphony's opponent has no chance against this technique and he cowers into a box. Symphony takes a second, drinks a mini, and makes his way down to crack open the box. His opponent is hiding under a ramp, which is a good move. Symphony decides to take it step by step and take control of the cone, then the roof, and lastly, the ramp. As he's about to take the ramp, his opponent edits out and pushes aggressively. Symphony blocks him off with the wall, sets up a quick edit, and smothers his opponent to death. Symphony busted out an array of clean, efficient build techniques to easily secure three kills. Aggressive players, do yourself a favor and take notes. This is the person to model your play after. Use the same edits, the same builds, the same pacing as Symphony, and the results will come. Before we make the decision on who's better, let's treat ourselves to one more Symphony clip. Not many players can make a 1v3 look like a walk in the park. The keys aren't just pinpoint aim or robotic building. You need confidence. Let's watch and learn from Symphony. Symphony lasers his first enemy. I love how he doesn't build right away. Instead, he pre-aims where his opponent would have ramped out. Even though he ends up pushing, this is the type of play that will save you materials and health in the long run. He bursts through the roof and he picks up the kill. Symphony's still holding his breath because he's pinched. He takes heavy damage, but he's able to stay alive. He picks up the bolt action right here, then he catches a brief break. The players shooting at him begin to fight each other. Notice he stops bandaging and he drinks mini shields instead. Minis are faster to use and more valuable. This is a minor detail, but you have to use every second wisely when you're on a time crunch. Soon after, he gets shot down and nearly connects on a quick scope before covering up in a box. He's getting pressured from above and is covering all angles. He even places a trap on the wall, making his opponent think twice before breaking in. This is a useful tactic that you need to start using. Did you hear that? That's the sound of feet touching the ground. Symphony knows exactly where his opponent is. He edits a corner and with the simple flick of the wrist, he picks up kill number two. The best part about this play was that he didn't look at his shot. He resets his wall, expecting to get shot back. This is the perfect example of how to edit peak. Next, enemy number three has extreme high ground and breaks the top of Symphony's box. This player goes on to make one of the most common mistakes in Fortnite. He stood still while pressuring. Symphony pulls out his bolt and he shoots player number three in the face. Now we've watched Symphony destroy three players without any fancy building techniques. The reason why is because he was efficient, both with his time and his materials. To Symphony and all pro players, everything they do has a purpose. He defended well when pinched and pressured. He also found the perfect moments to play offensively with edits. This clip is an example of knowing when to turn defense into offense, because if you just play defensively the whole time, you will end up dying. Always look for opportunities to kill your opponent, even when you're getting shot down from all angles. Hey guys, it's been a blast connecting with you on my Instagram. Some of you guys have been leaving messages, uh, so continue to do that. Love to hear from you and give you some more tips on how to play Fortnite. We'll see you soon.